Hello everyone! So in the last video we introduced some administrative details about the course and in this video we're going to introduce one of our very important tools which is Linux and the command line. Um, don't worry, might have got a little dark in my room. Some time has passed since I made the last video. I promise it's the same day I'm not re-wearing re the same clothes. So um, how are you going to actually get access to this Linux or Unix thing I keep talking about that this whole class is about? I'll explain a little bit about the history of what Linux and Unix is in a second, but kind of thinking about what you need to do in order to use one of these tools. We have two ways that we support in this course. Um, Linux and Unix are operating systems. There's lots and lots of different distributions of them, ways to download them. So cool how broad and vast the world of Linux is. It is so broad and vast, though, we possibly can't support every possible version of it. So we support these two versions that we list on the slides. And this is also listed at the Working at Home tab um, on the course website. Um, for those in the CSE major, you're able to use this SSH program uh, into this machine called Atu, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Um, students in EE, you have another... You have something that's exactly the same called Linux NN, and all students have access to this other server called Ovid. Uh, all of these are like remote servers that live in someone else's building that you can connect to and run commands on. Um, and then another option, and if you don't want to work remotely, is you can work locally. We provide, uh, the CSE department provides a virtual machine um, for all students that in 391 can download. A virtual machine is kind of like running a fake computer on your computer. So you don't have to worry about uninstalling your current operating system. You can kind of run it inside your operating system in a virtual machine. Both options work great. We recommend either, uh, but we can't guarantee support for any other options besides these two. If you want to venture on your own, that's great, but you're on your own. So we highly recommend one of these two, especially if you're not super comfortable with these Linux, Unix command line tool things. So that's just a warning about how you access these things. I'll talk a little bit more about those later. So what is this um, um, course gonna cover? So we're gonna cover lots of different things. We're gonna cover the Linux command line interface, how you talk to a computer in this command line format. We're gonna talk about the shell and shell commands and how you can do really fancy things with redirecting input and output from one command to another. Um, many of you probably have heard of this fancy version control system called Git that's very popular in industry. We're going to introduce a lot of the concepts that are used in Git, and this is going to put you in a really good step forward because you will have a good mental model for thinking about how to do these Git things rather than just looking at a bunch of random tutorials that just tell you a bunch of commands to type. And we're going to talk about a lot of other very important concepts in the command line world, like users, groups, permissions, how to do fancy data processing with these things called regular expressions, uh, talking about how you can write scripts. And I have a last topic at the end that I still need to decide, and I'm thinking about how you, we can focus uh, applications of these in industry, but I, that's open to change. So a brief history of Linux and Unix. So Unix and Linux are both operating systems. Um, Unix was is a bit older. Uh, it was first developed in 1969 by Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson. And it has a lot of very core, cool ideas that have been shared through a lot of different operating systems that were inspired by it. One of the most common ones, people say everything is a file. We'll talk about what that means, but they try to simplify things a lot by kind of making everything file-like. Um, you're allowed to have multiple users. There's a hierarchy in the file system. And really, they focused on providing a lot of simple commands that you could... Uh, combine together, glue them together to get very fancy things. If you're using a Mac uh, computer, Mac OS is based off the Unix operating system. So a lot of the things we learn about in Unix apply directly to your Mac. Um, and Linux was an offshoot of that. So it was developed in 1992, developed by Linus Torvalds, um, who also developed that Git program. Um, and, you know, you probably have heard of Linux before, like usually when people talk about operating systems, they talk about Windows and Mac, you probably heard other people say like, oh, I downloaded this Linux thing. Using Linux on your personal computer isn't the most popular thing. Um, it, a lot of people do it, but it's not necessary. It's not a skill that everyone needs. However, if you're going to be a developer or a researcher, 
all of the big computing servers, like where Google runs its websites or where UW does a lot of its data processing, those all live in the cloud or in servers that aren't hosted on my computer right here. And all of those servers, almost not all of them, obviously, but most of them run this Linux thing. So being comfortable with Linux on your computer and these, these systems that we set up is gonna enable you to work in big data systems on all these computers running Linux in the cloud. So one of our first concepts that we need to get used to when thinking about working with a Linux uh, operating system is it's very common that you're gonna use this thing called the shell. A shell is basically a command line program where I type text and get text back. Let me actually show you what this thing looks like on my computer. So I'm gonna open up on my Mac. Um, let me see if I can, well, I guess I can't get to show up here. I'm gonna open this program called Terminal. Uh, you can see it's spelled T-E-R-M-I-N-I-L. Um, the terminal is a, sh uh, is a way for me to interact with a shell. A shell is a program that lets me type an input and it spits output back to me. So Max, because they're Unix operating systems, they have shells built in. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see. This is just text so far, nothing, nothing fancy. Uh, maybe even a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is something, a place where I can type stuff and stuff will happen uh, based off what I type. I'll show you some things you can type in a second. But what we have here is it first prints out when was the last time I logged in, which was very very short time ago. Um, and then it prints out some information. So my name is Hunter. The, my computer knows my name. Um, and it's also showing this little squiggly thing, a uh, little tilde. Uh, that's actually telling me something about where I currently am in my computer. We'll come back to that. And then there's this dollar sign. Um, dollar sign is kind of the one of the universal signifiers that you're talking to a shell. Um, so everything that comes after the dollar sign is like the command you're about to type. So in a shell, you type commands, the computer runs the program, and it spits out some answer. Um, so if you're ever looking up things like in a tutorial online, you'll usually see that they leave the dollar sign inside like your example commands you should run to kind of indicate to you, hey, you should run this inside a shell, like your terminal on your Mac or, or whatever. Now, um, for most of you, because I said that our two supported ways are SSHing into this Autu thing or downloading the VM, the VM has a terminal built in, you could use that. Uh, but if you're using a Mac, what you could do is you can actually, instead of running things on my computer or your computer, you can actually go and run them on the CSE's computers. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to run this program called SSH. I'm going to type in my username, my CSE username, at and then autu.cs.washington.edu. Um, SSH username at autu.cs.washington.edu. I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna send me to the server. Now, you are probably gonna get prompted to put in your CSE password. You should do that. I've actually done a little bit of fancier setup, so it doesn't prompt me for my password. Don't worry when you're typing your password and it's totally secure, um, it doesn't even show you what you're typing, so no one behind you can like see your password. It's totally safe. But once you type that in, your CSE password, um, it will transport you essentially to the CSE basement. Notice that my shell looks completely different now. And the reason it looks completely different, like it says like H Schaefer at A2 and it has color on it, is because it's using a configuration that I stored on the CSE computers instead of my local computer. And so this makes it a little bit clearer that any commands you're running are actually being run on CSE's computers, and they're just sending the output back so I can see what the output looks like. So really cool. Um, for the rest of this video, I'm actually gonna leave A2. I'm gonna go back to my Mac, just so I can actually show you something a little bit more visual. But for pretty much every single lecture, I'll be on A2 and you can type commands along with me. You can also type these commands on A2, you'll just see something slightly different than me. And I'm just gonna go back to my Mac so that I can show you something a little bit more visual to help you understand what's going on with the commands I'm gonna show you next. So I'm gonna type a command called exit that gets me out of SSH. And notice I'm back to my, my old prompt again um, with just my name and the dollar sign, nothing fancy. And that's because I'm back on my Mac. 
and it, my Mac, I set it up so it's very, very simple. And I think I don't have any extra bells and whistles going on there. So you can kind of see already that with this command line, it seems like I type something, the computer does something, and usually it spits output back at me. So in Linux, there are lots and lots of commands you can type to do different things. Um, so for example, one program you could run is called PWD for print working directory. When you type this, it tells you kind of where are you on your computer right now. And since I'm on my Mac, I'm on my local computer right here. Um, if you ran this on Autu, it will say a much longer path, like homes, IWS, your username, some other stuff. Okay, PWD, print working directory. That's one program. And notice I typed it on one line, I hit enter to give the computer that command. The computer ran the PWD program and the PWD program prints out uh, wherever you are on your computer. There's another program that's very, very useful called ls for a list. What it does is it lists all the files in the directory that you're working in right now. And so you can see here, I typed ls and then enter, and it printed out a bunch of file names. To make this a little bit more concrete, um, I'm going to open up my computer's finder. And you can see here in my home directory, the hunter directory, there are all these files and directories. Um, let me um, type a command called clear to clear my terminal so I don't have to see any of that old output. Let me try that again, type ls. Um, if this is going fast, don't worry. There are a million Linux uh, commands you can use in, in Linux. The slides I have on the course website show you the best ones, the ones I'm introducing. And I also have a file there showing you all the commands I just typed. Uh, so you can always go back and refer to that if something, if you get a little lost. Okay, so I type ls. And look, the list of files on the, the left of my monitor is basically the same as the list of files on the right of my monitor. You can see all of those things there. So list ls prints the current directory, whatever's in the current directory. Now, what if you want to move around? Well, that's what the CD program is for, change directory. So change directory is a little bit different because you actually have to tell it which directory do you want to go to. So I want to go to the, the directory called lecture one. So I'm going to say CD lecture one. And notice that my path changed on the left-hand side, my, my prompt. It's showing me that now I'm inside the lecture one directory. That's what prompts are usually useful for, is they usually give you some information about the state of the system. OK, so I just CD in lecture one. Now I want to see what's inside here, so I'm going to type ls. Now, it's showing me four files. Essentially, what I've done here is I've gone, like if I was on my Finder on my Mac, I've double clicked on lecture one and like zoomed in to that directory. So when I type CD, that say go to that directory. So now kind of the state of my computer is kind of like we're looking at this directory right now in this shell. And you can see four files there. I have some text files, like this file called somefile.txt. This is a file with some contents. I have a picture. Uh, I've been really into that game Among Us right now. I think it's so fun and clever. Uh, so I download one of these pictures and there's directories inside of it. Okay. So now, um, suppose I wanted to go inside directory two and view what was there. Well, in my, in my, my GUI, in my, my graphical user interface, I would have to like double click or something. But my terminal, I could just type CD and then dir1, go inside dir1. And then LS again to print things out. And you could see, instead of double clicking, I could just expand it in my, my finder right here. And you could see, yes, there's both cats and dogs in there. And to be a little clear, this shell is keeping track, where am I in the file system right now? So if I type PWD again, it tells me what is the current working directory. And here I'm now in users, hunter, lecture one, dir one. Let me double click on this. Notice that my Mac shows me something very similar. I'm in users, hunter, lecture one, dir one, and these are all the files inside there. And so I, I want you to really think about whenever you're CDing around or LSing inside a terminal, really picture it as opening up File Explorer or Finder and like moving around inside your hierarchy of directories and files. When I said in Linux, everything is a file, we actually think of directories as just special types of files that hold other files. Um, and so if you remember back from maybe like 143, 
we talked about this recursive structure of a file is a plain old file or a directory, which contains other files, and those can be directories or files, and get this huge, beautiful tree of possibilities to explore. Now, I'm, what I've shown you so far is a little bit limited. I haven't shown you how you go back up. We'll do that in the next video. Um, but these commands, pwd, ls, and cd are going to be kind of your bread and butter for moving around the file system.